all aspects of human existence. Even you will see medical part. Surah, for example, Surah Al Mu'minun that starts with Qad Afah Al Mu'minun Al Ladina Hum Fi Salatim Khashon. This first part, 11 verses, talks about how to get to Jannah by right, by inheritance. And there are seven qualities mentioned, starting with Salah which of the heart and ending with Salah of the body. So you can see which one is more important. Then it goes into what I might call scientific side, which I didn't touch yesterday, but I, uh, just uh, as a re relevant point, that Quran provides everything. So human resource management is one component of all the guidance Quran can, can provide. And for, for some technical details, I also was able to share the references from Quran and Hadith related to how to manage people. There is one particular quotation that might interest you. Train people and they will leave. Treat people, then they will stay. So if you train and treat both, you have an upgraded workforce or volunteer force who will be able to do better things and stay with you. Family people won't run away, but staff will. So it is actually from, you know, Virgin Atlantic uh, is a big organization. It's, its founder saying that train people and they will leave. But train them and treat them well and they will stay and provide the impact of that training in productivity. So human resource management is a kind of, I also talked about Surah Al-Imran, verse 159. It provides five qualities of management leadership. Okay, it says, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim." Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. "Fabima rahmatim min Allah lin talab, wa la kunt fadlan ghalid al-qalb lan fadlu min hawli. Fa'afu anhum wa astaghfir lahum wa wa shawrum fil amf ida azamta fatawakkil Allah." So it says, <coughs> I, "I need to explain so that you can actually understand." I didn't have enough time yesterday. "Fabima rahmatim min Allah lin talab." It is the kindness of Allah. It is the Rahmah of Allah, the blessing of Allah, that you are very kind-hearted man. So this is first quality, kind-hearted. If you were harsh, if your heart, hard-hearted, bad manners, bad feelings, attitudes, then لَنْفَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Hawl means around. So they would run away from around you. That means to keep them with you, don't be bad man, don't be abusive, don't be disrespectful. So this is, so be kind is starting, then says, if it is not, if it is the opposite what will happen, you lose people. You lose your leadership, you lose your respect, you lose your influence in dunya and akhir. That's important. If somebody gets hurt, gets hurt because we attack his dignity or her dignity, then we are in trouble in akhir. In fact, it's also starting in dunya because they do, they do curse us. We have no right to undermine anybody. We may disagree, and we, we can part, but on good terms. Okay. Then Allah is telling Prophet Sallallahu how to do community development, which starts with relationship with others. Community development is fundamentally. One side is values, the other side is relationships. Okay? So human resource management would be, these two would be the two legs on which it runs. We have values, we believe in Allah and Rasul, and therefore Quran and Sunnah, and take it as life guidance, not just component of parts of life, small aspects of life, and the rest of them free from Allah and Rasul. That's not being faithful. Okay? So this side is relationship we have varieties of relationships. We have home relationship, work relationship, friend relationship, mosque relationship, project relationships. So these are Abdullah These are the two components that we need to be connected to and be complementary to each other. So Then Allah says, forgive your people. This is forgiveness is power. Punishment is anger. If I give somebody punishment, it expresses anger. If I forgive, it shows the 
not just kindness, but leadership. I have a video from America which says that forgiveness therapy will treat me better than the person I'm forgiving. It's a therapy, it's a, a field of study. Forgiveness is power. Power over myself and my emotions, my control of my personality is fundamental issue. Okay. So Fahu Anhu, forgive them. This is management issue. Uh, then it says, Wastafir Lahum. You ask Allah to forgive them. Look at the leadership and management here. To lead people, to manage people, we need to not just forgive them, but Allah, please forgive them. And who Allah is asking? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he is our model. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا So, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is for us. Uswatun Hasan is the best model to follow. So much best that Allah says, إِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ you have reached the top, the pinnacle of your character. So that's the person we need to copy. So Allah also says about him, the Prophet our model of manager, leader, is that the Prophet he said, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Prophet gives you to do, do it. Take it and do it. Whatever he prevents you, stops you from doing, stop it. Because that's the good and bad, according to Rasulullah, according to Allah, whatever Prophet Sallallahu says or does, is good for us. He's the model Allah sent to us. He's the model. So if we don't follow him, we deny Allah. I have more verses related to that. So, فَعَفُوا عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفُرُ لَهُمْ وَشَّعَبِرُهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And then consult them before making decisions. Now, the, I have seen in many parts of the world, in Africa and Asia, wherever I have been, there is a tendency for one or one or two people to make all the decisions without consulting. I consult my wife. When my children have grown up, I consult them too. This is consultation, advice and guidance in Quran is not just for organizations or offices, but also all human relations and leaderships and management. فَعَفُوا عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفُرُ لَهُمْ وَشَعَبِرُهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ So, this is the central issue in management, in human resource management. I couldn't focus so much and talk so much yesterday, last evening, because uh, there was some rush. I rushed and one brother said you were rushing. I said, I agree. I admit. I plead guilty, I, I should say. So, because I needed to, a lot of the slides I didn't discuss. I just showed and moved on. So this is one fundamental, critical verse about management and leadership. Surah Ali Imran 159. Surah Zukhruf, Surah number 43, verse number 32 is another fundamental issue. Where it says, وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَهُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْدٍ دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْدُهُمْ بَعْدًا سُخْرِيًا This is about, Allah is saying, I have selected some people above others. I have ranked high for them to get work done by the others. Now, we read Quran for spiritual purpose, but it's also for professional purpose. For what masajid, we need to get these kinds of management training for the mosque, mosque management. You know, whoever is involved in mosque and Islamic center management, they should be, uh, they should have a regular program of professional Islamic way of doing things. So we move from mosque and Islamic center into the professional world of work. Private sector, government sector, whatever it is. So this is another verse. The third verse, possibly in Surah Al-Hadid, but the verse number is 34. They say, whoever spends, Allah is describing an ideal leadership kind of manager kind of person. Whoever spends in the way of Allah, in good times and bad times, because both are intertwined in the Ma'al Usri Yusra. Bad and good are together, ease and hardship together. Okay, one follows the other. It's a cyclic uh, life. So, those who spend whatever Allah has given, influence, money, position, 
uh, talent, whatever, expertise. In good times and bad times, al and digests anger. Look at that. Well, Afina Ali Nas and knows how to forgive people. Wallah, you have a Muhsin. This kind of Muhsin people are among us. What's hidden behind this last part? Allah, you have Muhsinin. Allah loves the Muhsinin. What are the what is it saying to us? The shadow meaning that if we are not Muhsin, Allah's love will be not there. Can you see this hidden meaning? If you say, I love this kind of people, that means I don't love the other kind of people. So we need to also understand, analyze Quranic verses, not just professionally, but what's hidden behind it. So a wider meaning, something that is, that it is, shall we say, hidden, but is there. We can see. So human resource management related to uh, economy, efficiency, and effectiveness. I talked about that. Economy, efficiency, and effectiveness. Economy is low cost, high return. Efficiency is smooth operation. Effectiveness is getting the results right. So at a basic level, this is not in the medium or advanced level. Any organization performance, any project performance, any program performance should be looked at in terms of E, E, and E. Okay. We'll talk about community development. I have two uh, sets of presentations. One is community development, what and why. The other is community development, how, with some case studies. And you have to do some work as, as groups, because I will give you some work to do and I will learn. That's the way I learn from you. Everywhere I say, I get something. Because I'm not expert in everything. And there are young or not so educated, or not, but they have life experience that I learn from. So everybody is potential teacher to me. Okay. So that's basically uh, yesterday's focus, main focuses where I talked about economy and efficiency, motivation, and I talk, talked about how the Islam provided quotations from Quran and Hadith about all these. So you need to study Quran and Hadith from your professional perspective, not just religious perspective. It's not for Akhirah only, it is also for dunya. Some people say, some people say, dunya is not for Muslims. They are wrong. Do you have any proof that they are wrong? I'm saying they are wrong and I have proof. Do you have proof that anybody who says dunya is not for believers? Why they are wrong? Give me proof from Allah or Rasul. What do we do in dua? Rabbana, Atina, Fit dunya hasana. Who is teaching it? It's in the Quran. Who is teaching it? Allah is teaching us to ask goodness of dunya. Halal things in dunya. This is halal. The program is halal, the food is halal, relationship is halal, working together is halal. So all these are in dunya. And our Rasulullah says to say, at dunya madzra'atul akhirah. Dunya is the cultivation ground for akhirah. So we work here, we get results there. But there's also a result here. The result is our heart is tranquil. Our mind is settled. There is no tense feeling that I've done something wrong. There is no pricking the conscience when we do wrong. So that's basically we are talking about human resource management. Human resource is the most powerful resource, most potential resource uh, of all the resources. And I'll talk about the resources. Now, human resource, I also gave a story. How many people uh, did not attend yesterday? So let me just share, those who heard it, let me just share this uh, story of Kenya. You remember? Yeah, Kenya? Abdus Salam. So I, because it shows the, the power of human resource, how much rich human resource. This five-year-old boy lost his parents. The north part of Kenya is all Somali people because that's bordering Somalia, but the Somali people's land was given to Kenya by the colonial powers. Another big chunk of land of Somali people went to Ethiopia, for which there was a war that uh, the Somali couldn't win. That was Siad Barre's time. Now it's Somali land, Pant land, and uh, Somalia, three parts. So you have this five-year-old and an orphanage uh, 
a Muslim man who runs an orphanage with 400 people. He picked him up, put him in the orphanage. He went through Islamic curriculum first, then went through national <coughs> curriculum second. Then he went to University of Nairobi to do a degree, honors degree in sociology. After he graduated, the uh, orphanage authority committee appointed him as the manager of the place that he grew up in. It was like his parents, it was like his home, because from five year old, then in 2018, he has been appointed as the public service commission chairman of his province. Think about if he was abandoned and not picked up. All these talents that he's demonstrating, all the values that he's adding to society would be lost. Therefore, each one of you, each one of you has more talent than you know yourself. Let me give you my example. When I went to England in 1972, I never uh, imagined in my wildest dreams that I would be doing what I'm doing now. At that time, I couldn't speak English. I had to struggle to become English and pass through A-levels. I couldn't understand during my first year because the teacher in Manchester used local accent and high speed. By the time I understood one word, he was on the 10. And I couldn't understand by reading the books in English. I had to go to the dictionary so many times I couldn't make up. And look at what Allah has made. And then I joined the Urdu speaking Pakistani Dawah group and learn Urdu so I can give speech in Urdu. I was, I could never imagine that. I went to Saudi Arabia for work, which was, office was English based, but I took interest in learning Arabic so I can get private conversation without any, any problem. I could not imagine that that would be possible. So I guess there are many more things I can do that I do not know yet. Okay, so what I'm saying is, like the senior professor from Malaysia, he has achieved kind of height in his career. But he has more talents, I believe, from my 35 years of official community development work, that he has more talent that he has not found out yet. Talent means potential, talent means ability in hidden. We need to bring them out. So basically, human resource management is managing me and managing others to get certain th uh, agreed things done. Collectively, with mutual relationship, being productive and positive. Okay, So that's basically it from yesterday. Those who attended yesterday, ask me any question. I'm here. If there are any questions? <clears throat> Either I confused you all, Oh, clear to you all. We have, we have one question over here and one question over there. Sure. Uh, sure actually, I didn't attend the yesterday session, but uh, you mentioned about the mashwara. So how should be the manner of mashwara in case there are some uh, different ideas and the people wants insist on their own ideas? So what, what should be the, the manner of the mashwara? This is very, very good question. What happens is that in a group, in a team, in a team, you discuss things and you decide. Then in the process, some people do not talk at all because maybe they all have ideas, but maybe the others are too dominant. And that person needs a, a space to be created for that person to join in. And you will find one person or two persons talking a lot, and maybe one, two, three people not having the chance to talk at all. So the chairperson, the leader, the president, has to manage these two kinds of people. There may be third kind, disruptive kind. One is positive talking type, the other is disrupting uh, the proceedings. So you have varieties of angles. You need first as chairperson, chairman or chairwoman, to create conditions where everybody will have respect for each other and create, provide space for each other. And they need to understand that one person will never be good enough in everything. Let me show you something about that. 
Okay, here is one, here is one, this is going to be D. Okay, there is D. Now, if this is the chairperson, okay, so this person says something, and this person responds, and then this person responds, then this person responds, then this person again picks up, and he responds, and then. So what's happening is that all these discussions that this person came back second time, is enriched by the other's comments. If we are open-minded, if we, our goal is joint goal, if we are trying to achieve things together, think about this is a team, a committee. They're all different, right? So this is how it works together. If they were exactly the same, they couldn't be team. We need complementary team members who can com complement each other and strengthen each other in order to proceed to achieve. Committee is not, it's a means, not the end. Some people, and those who are obstinate and stubborn and uh, they want only their way, my way or highway, meaning get out, then they should not be in committee. They should either uh, be given counsel because there is some imbalance in the mindset, attitude, behavior, that should be done. But that should be done privately. And he should not be identified because that will hurt his ego and dignity. So there are people, I've seen them. I actually do committee exercise and I deliberately say somebody to be disruptive, somebody to be quiet and somebody to be talkative. And they don't know and the chair has to manage it. And then I analyze afterwards, after the role play, that how do you think the chair performed and how the process went. What happens in a conflicting situation is that you, you defeat your purpose. If everybody wants a particular target to be achieved, then they need to cooperate even though they need to agree to disagree and respect each other's views. It's like saying, I don't agree with you, but I respect and protect your right to disagree with you. This is being human. Think about it. Over a period of 10 years, 10 years ago you took a position, now 10 years after you changed that position. Do you fight with yourself? This is normal, this is dynamic, this is life, this is progress. So we need to allow a team, team I said yesterday, team is, has different meaning. Together, everyone achieves more. Okay? Team means together everyone achieves more. Because then talent, as, as I say, it gets to build up. And then you are achieving higher than individually we could develop them. Okay? So this is, so your sister's, sister's question? Yeah, this question relates to gender role, like in terms of what you mentioned um, about talent and all that. Um, but you know, like I'm part time, so culturally, uh, some things are very frowned upon, even like sitting on the front row, like you saw, the ladies mostly are sitting behind. Like, so as somebody who's born and raised in Hong Kong, where we have Chinese values, we see Western values, and then you have this cultural value, which sometimes gets, you know, confused with Islamic values as well. So, you use the word, so that was English. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so for example, if, you, if I just give you one example, um, I was asking you about talent and all that, but if we just go to very basic, for example, last year there was a, um, I went on Hajj, and for that I went to uh, the Kaaba Masjid, Kaaba Mosque, in Chamsa Chai for uh, Hajj, um, which was uh, a, a, a uh, a seminar sort of, which was for three to four hours. And we were placed in a room that was even like half of the size. And there was a petition. So there was a projector right there. And where the ladies were sitting, we could not even see the projector. And the problem is that these things are so much ingrained in our minds that most of the women sitting there had no problem, that they're going on the one of the biggest journeys of their life they're sitting there to learn, but they cannot even see the projector. So the Mufti Sahab is going on. Like for me, because uh, uh, personally I cannot accept that I cannot see the projector and the Mufti Sahab is talking. So I had to move forward onto the in front of the Mufti, like right, right now where I am. But culturally, this is frowned upon that as a girl, you should not be sitting in the front row 
or be sitting in front of the speaker, this is too close. All right, so you should at least, you know, maybe two or three seats back or try to sit at the back. But for example, like, like I mentioned, like, this is so ingrained in us that even women will tell you, oh, it's okay, we can't see the projector, and then they're talking among themselves, and Mufti's talking and talking, and the ladies are just talking among themselves, and when it's over, a lady goes like, okay, I'm like, what's the purpose of all this? So, so uh, the, this is a very ingrained issue. Uh, this is an issue. issue of religion um, versus culture. Yeah. Okay. So like, what I learned is like, if I read, I feel like this is Islam, but when you go through what you go through here, uh, and even in Pakistan, then you will see, okay, there's also another thing called Desi Islam. Mm -hmm. So I hope you get what I mean. So mm -hmm. if you could talk a little bit about gender okay. role, uh, what is it that as a um, woman that they should do within the framework of Islam? Uh, uh, like, yeah, I get I will give principle. I will give principle. Uh, Surah Baqarah, verse number 170. This is what I just checked uh, from my pocket because I keep it. Uh, it's written in Bangla. So, uh, Surah Baqarah verse number 170 says, When they are told, follow what Allah has revealed, which is Quran and Sunnah both, because Rasulullah sallallahu did not say anything outside his guidance. And Quran says that, وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْدٍ يُوحَىٰ he does not say anything from what is desire, his desire. He says only when he gets wife. This is Allah saying in Quran. So anything he said in Sunnah, in Hadith, in practice, they are validated because they are wahi. So Quran and Sunnah, they say, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ قَالَ is he says, قِيلَ is he is told, it's passive voice. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ اتَّبِعُوا Do اتباع or obey, follow, practice, implement. Uh, whatever Allah has revealed. They say, but we will obey. From our forefathers, the customs and traditions, all these we will follow. What they are actually saying, we reject Allah and Rasul when it tackles, when it contradicts culture. So, culture and religion, when it clashes, for most people, even religious people, the culture wins, religion loses. Because everything must be validated by Allah and Rasul. Our faith is not in the Mufti or the Grand Mufti or the Maulana or the Shaykh, whatever. Our belief, our faith is built on Quran and Sunnah. Allah and Rasul. Allah and Rasul and Quran and Sunnah. Quran from Allah, Sunnah is from Rasul. Okay? So anything that we say should be done, it is right, and the other is wrong, both. Right and wrong should be validated from Quran and Sunnah. Of course, there is Ijma and Qiyas, which is built on Quran and Sunnah. So, therefore, a lot of people uh, still in the in the way of religion, they actually implement and force culture. For example, from the beginning, Prophet وسلم, provided space for the sisters, ladies, to pray in Masjid al Nabi, which continues today. But you will see particularly in Hanafi circles and particularly Hanafi from the subcontinent, they don't allow women at all. Now, that's not following the Prophet Sunnah. Because you have, to the number of from the beginning, women had a place. And Rasulullah system allocated a specific time to teach them. And of course, the, the top for key of that time was Aisha radiallahu anha. We need faqih like her from the sisters who can who can be jurists. She taught behind curtain. She taught the men. And I have a book. I think it's e book. It's called the Sahaba, Lady Sahaba, who taught their husbands the deen. Where is that role? Because a lot of cultural uh, preventive measures that are not clearly validated by Dean is preventing and also uh, sisters need to promote the interest among the sisters to learn more and have Arabic uh, competence. One of my sons is an Arabic uh, expert because he did a uh, degree in Arabic and Islamic studies from Oxford then PhD from Princeton and he knows Arabic as good as English. 
And he also knows Bangla because that's what I thought from the beginning, or my, me and my wife. So what I'm saying is that I cannot give direct uh, response because I'm not an Islamic scholar to give fatwa. I'm not a Muslim. But I'm saying the principle is that culture and religion, when they clash, religion should win, not culture. I, I'll give you another example. And yesterday I mentioned one man went from London to Bangladesh, Dhaka, to get married. After marriage, his friends and his relatives came with their wives and said, bring your wife, we want to see them. And he said, sorry. The, the women can go in and see her, the men cannot see her. So they said, why? So he said, this is not allowed in Islam that uh, women should be displayed in front of men. Newly wed, all kinds of decorations done. So they didn't like it. He said, please give me evidence from Quran and Hadith. Only then I will move. If, even if my father says, I will not move. Sorry. And I, I'm not telling you how your wife should be. Uh, this is my, how my wife is and we have agreed already between us. That means wife and husband talk and say Allah and Rasul will be dominant in our relationship. Okay. So they didn't like him. So they didn't talk to this man for a year normally, just dry distance. So the man said, it's not my problem, it's their problem. They want to dictate to me how my wife should do and not do. That's culture. Because everybody is doing it. So he said, I'm not everybody. I'm a Muslim and I only take orders from Allah and the uh, and Rasul. Sorry, I can't do anything more. So he stood his ground. It's like Makkans rejected Prophet It was not defeat for the Prophet. It was defeat for the Makkan community. The Quraysh got defeated. And in the end, by force, they submitted. Can you see? Allah brought it back. So that's why I say that uh, you need to study when you study. All of you, sisters, you study. Have direct access to Allah and Rasul. Then you can counter them yourself. Where you find something like that. Because you have a lot of intellectual uh, capacity just like men. Which can be uh, developed and which can benefit others. How, what form should be. Of course there are cultural patterns in here and there and there. Um, uh, so despite those, the women, for example, to learn, to learn is to seek knowledge is for all Muslims. And it is funny that according to Prophet Allah says, Those who know and those who don't know are the same. It started with the The learning, nowhere it says it should be should only men. The only places where it should be only men is Imam. Even women can lead women's congregation. I, I uh, read uh, about that. But where it's some places men have been given specific roles and women have been given some specific roles. Everywhere else for learning and practice and teaching, this is uh, to be done everybody, by everybody. Because otherwise we are losing talents from you. You are losing and we are losing. And there are various forms, uh, so the details we don't, want to, uh, we don't need to go into. Um, I'm going to go into brainstorming here. Any, any more question before I go into brainstorming? Before community development, I want to tease your brain. Okay, no more question? Okay, let's go. Is it on or off? That's a very good question.